it about five, four, three, two, one. Well, hello, welcome <laughs> back. Here we are with this is Ultimate Doom. Um, we've got a commentator, so you guys no longer have to uh, hear me talking about these games that I don't understand. So you guys are going to have a great experience lined up next. Y'all, please go ahead, introduce yourselves, tell us about the category. Um, let's, yeah, let's get right into it. <laughs> Thank you, Mug. Hey, I'm Zillow or Zillow, however you want to say it. It's great to be back as always. Um, Doom has always been one of my favorite games as a kid. And very conveniently, it is Doom's 30th birthday in December, so I'm really happy to be able to do this <laughs> this run coming up showcase. 30 years of basically what was the first modern speedrunning game. Like, this game has such a huge, rich history of speedrunning. Um, I do have one very special friend and commentator, if you want to introduce yourself real quick. Yeah, hey everyone. Uh, I am Ellie, uh, also a gigantic Doom fan. Um, mostly... In uh, Doom 64, I speed ran that for a little bit, which you're going to see tomorrow. But today, uh, Zelo is going to be doing Ultimate Doom, uh, which is the original Doom for PC. Uh, going to be doing all four original episodes uh, on UV speed, which is basically any percent. Uh, and then UV standing for ultra violence, which is more or less the hardest difficulty in the game. So um, I guess we're going to get right into it, huh? Yep, we'll get started in just a second. So yeah, we have all four episodes, the main three ones, plus the fourth expansion episode introduced in Ultimate Doom, which was released two years after the original game. And then we have Ultra Violence. That's the norm, the hardest normal difficulty. Nightmare is its own special category because it was added later. And it's it's an experience if you've never played Nightmare. But we're going to go ahead and get started with Ultra Violence in three, two, one, Doom! Doom! All right, so E1M1, or episode one, map one. Really short, straightforward. There's two paths to take to the end. Uh, Zelo's taking the secret path to get some mega armor, which is gonna carry out multiple resources, especially for map three. And we are already done with E1M1. Um, so real quick, um, while we're going through E1M2, we can talk about randomness in this game. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff that's random, including damage you take, damage you give, probably the biggest thing. Uh, the spread of your shots, like the shotgun here, uh, and the chain gun, which we are on. Some enemy movement, accuracy of their attacks, uh, specifically enemy from shotgunners, uh, which we also call hit scanners. Uh, so like gimps, uh, just those brown dudes, uh, they fire projectiles. Uh, but yeah, hit scanners like shotgun. Uh, they basically fire shots at this point, and uh, it's just like, like, just like uh, yeah, speaking of hit scanners, there's a ton of hit scanners in this level, and this level is notorious oh. for killing runs with how early it is. Oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, like Neil said, a ton of hit scanners in this map. Um, that's exactly what we picked up the Mega Armor for the first map. Uh, we did, I did explain hit scanners. Uh, basically just instant shot, just decides whether they hit you or not. Uh, comes down to RNG. Uh, but yeah, this is the first map with quite a bit of map tracking after picking up the key. It's gonna be costing passes to picture the scanners. Oh, really? Yeah. Got nailed right at the end. <laughs> that was unfortunate. That was the end of the level. But you can see, th this game's hard. Even on Ultra Violence, this game's really tough, and you can do just about everything right and still get blasted from randomness. Yeah, and like, one of the big things I love about Speed is that, like, there's so much RNG, but in, in like a fun way, I would say. Like, you're never gonna get the same run twice ever, and like, you just kind of have to adapt on the fly to whatever the game comes at you. So yeah, I'm just going through. Uh, the, uh, uh, I did the level with this rising staircase, hoping the hit scanners play nice. A uh, lot better health-wise this time around. Yeah, much better there. Let's talk about movement real quick. Um, there's two types of strafe running in this game. There's strafe running 40 and strafe running 50. Um, basically, strafing is faster, being able to move to the side and forward at the same time. You get a, either a 28% speed boost or a 41% speed boost, depending on which kind of strafe running you're doing. But the downside to using SR50 is that you your turning angle is locked and you're not able to turn. So we save SR50 specifically for jumps like that big one, which just basically skipped this whole level. Yeah, and I think uh, there's like a little 
glitch with that yellow door, right? It comes kind of yeah, I got, I got, I got destroyed by that door. So that door is funny enough. It's also tagged the same way as a lift elsewhere in the level. And if that lift activates, uh, you can't open the door. It's funny, in a bad way. Yeah, there's a few programming funnies here and there in this game. Uh, they don't turn too too much, but yeah, just something to think about, I guess. Um, yeah, in, also in E1 and 4, we picked up that yeah. and we get it, which uh, basically doubles our capacity for the so we shell as well. E1 and 5 here, I uh, believe in that, uh, that corridor we passed for a little bit, basically did a final shot. That's usually like the most enemies in here in the same uh, center of the stairs. So it's basically just like moving back to the shop. And that's the short hallway we cross there. Uh, just kind of go around the edge to basically like get around the monster. So um, the inside is a small room is kind of tricky. Oh, this. Everything's blocking me. <laughs> Everything's in the way here. Okay. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we're not going to get destroyed by this exit room here. Okay. That was good. Yeah. All right, big trick right here. So I'm gonna try and get a shotgunner to walk in a very specific way. And we just blocked a door from coming down. So normally you get locked in this room for 30 seconds. But by having the shotgunner's head block the door, the door politely goes back and it's like, oh, I'm sorry. And then uh, you don't have to stay in the room. So we can just leave. Yeah, there's, there's a few uh, doors that kind of like that. Just like, they, they open and they don't, or they close and they don't open for like 30 seconds. And if they have to do nothing, Except, yeah, if, uh, if you block it, it goes back up. <laughs> I don't have to worry about it. Um, yeah, we just picked up uh, an invisible on the sphere. That's one of the, like, special kind of power-ups. Um, it's, it's not the best for, like, projectiles or anything else like these. Like, they kind of uh, angle the shots weirdly, and it's hard to turn it up. This room is like this room right here. Uh, shot room right here, so we do so much with this. Okay, the ending room coming up is really scary, so we're going to very carefully bait enemies in a very specific way and then rush to fire a bunch of rockets so the enemy's blocking right here. There, beautiful. Because <laughs> otherwise, that, that that room has no less than like 25 enemies once everything's opened, and if you get stuck in there, you're dead. You're very yeah. dead. <laughs> I remember that back in the day, first place of being that a huge wall for me in that one room. <laughs> Uh, yeah, UNM7, uh, we take a lift up here in the LP, and since we have to wait for the lift, we have to do, but we can just clean up to the trail and get back easier. Uh, take a long trek to the other side of the map, the red key, and uh, on the way back, <laughs> nice to <gym, yeah. laughs> On the way back, uh, we're gonna jump off a bridge for a shortcut. Yeah, this really shows like the chain gun's utility right here, just because the the good old cha 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 keeps enemies stunned while you're you're mangling them. It's yeah, also just good DPS too. Yeah, and there's charge that I'm not sure. Um, it's plus 100 percent health. Um, uh, but yeah, you know what I'm talking about. Um, <laughs> the chain gun charge. Uh, basically, every enemy has something that they can charge. There was uh, a trick that was discovered recently that could basically skip the entire level, but we're not really going to this Ow, like, that hurt. <laughs> <laughs> they kind of got in the way there. Here, let's try this a different way. They're still getting in the way. I think I'm probably going to die again. Well, let's try and make this work. We're going to have some fun. We're going to try and make this work here. Yeah, actually... Okay. Uh, <laughs> got tagged by problems. Problem. Actually, it's optimal, yeah. technically, yeah. <laughs> so, I actually need to die at the end of this level in order to complete it. So, low health would actually be ideal, but, uh... I'm notorious for not doing this fight very well sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it is, yeah, it's 
pretty crap with the specters here. Yeah, there's a lot of invisible, like invisible enemies, like the specters. They're 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 the pinkies, but they're invisible and they like to get in your way a lot. So once uh, specifically these barons, the red enemies are done, uh, the walls lower from here. Uh, and if we can, I'm gonna do. There we go. Oh, this. And yeah, there we go. Uh, so otherwise. We... Yeah, we oh, entered that last room. <laughs> we entered the last room, it has a special sector where if you're at 10% health or less, it completes the level, and we basically just die. And now we're on to the second episode. Yeah, second episode, um, this is outside of the shield version. Full version back then. Armor. And, uh, introduces, uh, a new weapon in yeah, episode 2. Uh, a couple of new enemies. We'll see that pretty soon, actually. Gotta get past the small troopies here, and, uh... They're not giving me good luck here. Ooh. It's a little sketchy. Pretty fun, pretty fun. <laughs> it's good. Uh, yeah, here we go. Uh, here's that hissing. There's uh, the Cacodema. Basically, more or less the mascot. Uh, it's so adorable. <laughs> yeah, I know Zula has uh, a plus here. Right? Probably sitting and playing around. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was E1M1. E1M2. Or, sorry, E2. Come on. So, E2M2. Two two. Um, pick up what's called a booster pack for the first time, I believe. Um, which increases your health to 100%, uh, no matter where it was, if it was on all that. And uh, you see a red tint as well. I mean, it also it just auto switches to your first weapon, which is usually the weakest weapon. I'm gonna do it by so, Ah, I missed it. Here. That's okay, there's a backup for this. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, there's a switch right there. But yeah, uh, Berserk basically just increases your discard tenfold. Which, uh, can one shot make this? Dude, some of the people are great. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, if you notice, uh, in the beginning of E2M3, uh, Zina isn't uh, firing for a little bit, just basically more uh, passive manipulation, keeping enemies ready for, for fire and shot. Uh, yeah, not much, to, uh, not too much else to say beyond that. Just for, like some tight core animation in the back half. Also, it's kind of funny, uh, this music has the same music as like, the music of the Weird, funny transition. Right here. <laughs> this level's pretty straightforward, so let's talk about source ports real quick. So I'm playing this on a source port. Uh, source ports are basically a modified executable of the game that allow them to run on modern operating systems. And they often come with a lot of like extra features. Like you can see, I'm playing this on widescreen support. I've got a level ca uh, stats counter in the bottom left. Uh, I'm specifically using DSDA Doom, which is a relatively new source port. And the nice thing about a lot of really great source ports is they either have lots of extra features like Z Doom or GZ Doom, or they're vanilla compatible for speed runs. Um, because this game uses a demo system for competitive speed running, and these extra source ports maintain that compatibility with like the functions, behaviors of the original game. And any demo that you record in a compatible source port like this, you can play back in the original game. Yeah, it's very, very handy. Uh, so the stats count at the bottom left is okay. Stand for kills, I set up items, I set up secrets. You can see how much this game is. Yeah, it's love it. Um, as well as the like timer counter per episode and from that, it's, it's pretty nice. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's too much going on in E2 M5 if the host has anything they want to say. I am so glad you said that because I do have something I'd like to say. I just wanted to plug one more time to um, donate towards that incentive to name the hero in Quest for Glory, which is up next. And there's not a single dollar towards any of these names. Meaning for just one dollar, you could single-handedly decide what hero is going to discover all unique game over messages because that's the category that we're about to enjoy which sounds really funny um so please do go ahead and get a donation in for that and reminder that any amount donated today um instantly enters you to win all the four prizes that are available um among them we've got take this lapel pin it's this gorgeous blue enamel pin that's got of course their iconic sword and shield logo over the blue castle um among other things and it even enters you to win our whole week's grand prizes including that um trans flag colored game boy advance and that game boy advance is modded with a usb um charging battery so you no longer need to keep your double a batteries um to play this game boy advance so please do get those donations in it enters you to win prizes it goes towards take this everybody wins. Thank you so much. 
Thank you. Uh, unfortunately, we skipped like a lot of explanation on the two tricks in the last two levels. So we yeah, did. We basically did it out of bounds to an E2M6 and press the exit switch from outside. And then in E2M7, we used a rocket jump to skip basically the entire level by using a huge boost. Because Doom doesn't have a proper Z axis. There's no actual jumping. But you can use a rocket to propel yourself horizontally really, really fast. Yeah, I just want to do a recap of that real quick. I, yeah, I just wanted to mention, you got those two tricks really fast. Yeah, that, that was really quick. <laughs> but that's okay, yeah, uh, we're on E3 now. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so yeah, um, you told me it was the Cyber Demon boss, uh, did a bunch of plasma, gun firing, probably the best uh, for that. Uh, boss, uh, but yeah. That was the past, uh, we are at the end one now, uh, which introduces a couple of new things even further. Um, the end one's <laughs> pretty slow paced, uh, very tight corridor, um, walking traversal here as you can see. Very, uh, big traffic jam with imps in the end. Um, I hate this yeah. room so much. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, yeah, I think the end one as a whole pretty slow. Um, but yeah. Done with that. Um, 3 on 2 is a pretty short map for UV speed. Uh, basically, just pick up the plasma gun, you can just see it right here. Um, touch the raised sector to start the wall lower trigger, and then grab the blue key in the meantime. Um, also, an interesting fact is that um, if you were to press tab to like, look at the auto map, it's apparently shaped like a head. Shout out to Sandy Peterson for some of the map designs in episodes 2 and 3. So, see exactly what's going on in there. Um, but yeah, E3 and um, 3, uh, first thing we do here is pick up the blue key, and yeah, there's a chance you can get the body blocked, even though you're much higher up uh, exiting this area. Then we just have infinite height for that purpose, and can even melee you. Yeah. Got lucky uh, there. Which, yeah, nice. Uh, so yeah, we just picked up uh, probably like, my favorite weapon in the whole series, the BFG. Uh, far and away, the most powerful weapon in the, uh, in the game. Um, I don't know if I could talk about that real quick. Uh, Let's do the uh, key grab coming up. So we, we talked about SR50 a little bit earlier. Um, the way collision in this game works is that if you manage to get enough speed, uh, you can kind of clip into objects or walls for a frame before the game pushes you back out, but that allows you to grab objects that may be on them, like keys. So we're actually going to do a very specific trick where I'm going to set myself up for a wall bump and we're going to hopefully grab a key through a wall right here. Now the problem is I have these imps on my tail while I'm doing this, so we're going to save and hopefully get this fast. Come on. There it is. Okay. Nice. So, <laughs> so that's what we call the uh, the yellow key booty grab. <laughs> because the BFG actually stands for the big firm glutes, which is what Doom Guy has. Oh yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Now's so, a good yeah, time to talk about the BFG. Yeah, um... Uh... Yeah, E3M5, not too much going on. Um, yeah, the BFG, basically, um, what happens is, uh, you fire a huge BFG ball, like a green radioactive ball, um, and it hits, like, it hit, does some pretty substantial damage, but when it hits, um, a bunch of tracers fire up in, like, a cone shape from the direct, like, the angle when you fire the BFG, like, 40 or so. And that actually does the bulk of the damage. Um, so, like, optimally, if you want to do the most damage to something like a boss or uh, you can just like basically point blank shoot it and give it the extra point. And you can like two shot with two boss. Uh, in, in By the way, this is our favorite texture in the game right here. This is called Fire Blue, and it is the destroyer of Doomstream, so we must look at it as much as possible in this level. <laughs> I am obligated to look at it as much as possible. <laughs> it's yeah. Yeah, uh, <laughs> apologies for the stream bit rate. <laughs> uh, so yeah, E3M7, one of the biggest levels, I think, in the entirety of this run. Um, first thing we do is trek over to the blue key, then all the way back to the blue door. We're gonna navigate uh, through this maze to get to the red key, and at the end here we're actually gonna do another SR50 as we clear out the area muscles. Uh, this one's tricky, because you can overshoot it. And that actually results in a soft lock because you don't have uh, the bridge uh, lower the ways. Uh, I forget exactly how it works, but yeah, you, you skip something that's meant to like be like a level. It's, it sadly <laughs> happened in practice right before this, so I'm going to save before then just to make sure that doesn't happen again. 
So yeah, a bunch of SR50s just break this level because you're intended to raise a bunch more bridges, bridges, but with enough speed you can just cross these gaps, which is really handy. Or at least I would be able to if I could get these inputs right. <laughs> it's really difficult to SR50 sometimes because I have to do four inputs all at the same time. Yeah, that one was not too inconse er, inconsequential because uh, there's like a stick right there. Oh, this jerk's yeah, in the way. Here's that could happen. <laughs> Yeah, it goes. Nope. Yeah, if you overshoot this bridge, uh, you're soft. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay, All so right. here, here is how the BFG works, because we're gonna fight the Spider Mastermind. So here is the Spider Mastermind. There was the Spider Mastermind. <laughs> it never gets old. <laughs> nope. You just give it a big fiery hug, and we're going on to E4. And anybody who's played this episode casually knows how really, really hard these first couple of levels is. <laughs> Yeah, it, I mean, especially the first level, I think. There's barely any health pickups. I think, I think maybe no armor as well? Uh, there's a um, green armor and like 8% health. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's like, there's even a few barons, which are the bosses of the first episode, that they throw in here just because, you know, well, I got. I'm gonna get this, uh, this red key through the fence here. I kind of like hugging it. Um, going pretty quickly. Health and armor is still really good. Yeah, this is actually really great. So just, looks like we're going to get out of here pretty quick. And that means we also have this uh, really tough level coming up where I need to actually grab a BFG through the wall. Yeah, it's basically another key grab. It's like, really good. I have to do this. I have to do that quick, otherwise these cacos fill the room. And now we have to make a very difficult jump. Oh, that caco oh, blocked me. That's, that's why I'm glad I saved. Now we should be good. So now we jump all the way to the end. We're gonna ignore that cyber demon that's on the left over there. Don't worry about him. We'll see him later. <laughs> oh yeah. Before I'm, uh, yeah, before I'm six, it's gonna be rough. Um, yeah, before I'm three, um, uh, pretty speed, you just skip the entire level, essentially. Uh, use an invo and a lost to rocket jump. Ah, almost had it. Oh, yeah, because the edge is right here. Come on. So. This is a tough jump because I'm shooting off of a moving target, so it's a little yeah. it's a little tricky. Okay, there we go. Nice. Okay. Uh, E4, M4. I don't think there's too much going on. Uh, not too much, uh, note that I have here. Um, uh, I don't know if you have anything as well, unless, uh, just a bus. No, I just want to say, like, this game's awesome, and you should absolutely play it in any way you can, uh, if, if you're able to. Um, like I said, I'm playing this through a source port. You can play the originals through DOSBox. You can play the uh, Unity re-release that they did in 2019. Uh, there's just a lot of really great ways to enjoy this game, both for casual play and for running. Mm -hmm. yeah, so if you're an FPS fan, you don't want to pass this Um, yeah, absolutely. We got $10 in from Alice Rujasu, who just showed off those awesome shareware games. They donated $10. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jesse. Oh, and up note, that did go towards that naming incentive. And uh, Rujasu chose the name Restore What Save. So, hey, if you love that name, get your donations and reinforce that. Or get them in, uh, you, you gotta beat $10 now. All right, so normally we'd have to get a couple of keys in this level, but this level has a bit of a weird design. I could go get keys, or I could just jump through this big inviting window right here and go straight to the exit. <laughs> and that brings us to the hardest level in the run by far. Yeah, E4M6. Uh, that's about the second one we passed up in E4M2. This has one that we're going to have to fight, actually. I don't know, because uh, <laughs> it's, it's pretty tricky for getting to the other one. Yeah, we start by straight running uh, after this teleporter to the balcony here in the front key really early, which skips most of the map. Um, then we get to the end. <laughs> and honestly, yeah, even getting into the room with the cyber like, on that balcony is really difficult. Uh, it's just a very awkward, uh, like... Come on, cyber. Come on, cyber. There we go. So we're going to try and cause some infighting here. Uh, I accidentally killed the enemy he was infighting, so he ended up blowing me to smithereens. So yeah, that is a tiny, tiny room. You have, even if you don't get hit directly by the rockets, 
Uh, the rockets will probably just uh, do splash damage at, on the walls right next to you and kill you that way. So this is by far the scariest level in the entire run because it's very easy to just get stuck here for forever. Yeah, the problem with Kakos is they don't have a whole lot of health. Oh. Uh, okay, I that works. Almost spoke too soon. <laughs> that was close. That's okay. As long as we can get out, we're good. There is a Berserk pack in this level that will go out of our way to get, so we're okay. But like I said, anything that. As long as you can get out of the cyber fight, you're fine. Yeah. Pass that, so we're the cyber at this point. Yep. So, yeah. Kind of. We have one more SR50 trick right here. We're gonna line up with this, and we're gonna get to the exit platform, hopefully. And then we're just gonna press the exit switch while it's in the wall. <laughs> and that brings us to the last level of the run. Yeah, if we switch it up, we just basically have to be near it. Uh, like, why is it this bad? As long as you have to clean the side to press the switch. Uh, the same goes for this. But yeah, anyway, before I then we get to the map of the run. Uh, so we're gonna BFG right away to get a lot of levels again. This is a bunch now. Just don't want to conserve health for this map because we're gonna do a lot of shelter for the levels now. Nice. Nice, yeah. So one more Spider Mastermind right here. And we're gonna hopefully uh, leave as soon as we, if we can jump into this portal right here. Time is when I leave. So hopefully we'll get on top of the pillar, and that is time. Nice, DG. Thank you. <laughs> oh, scary E4, but we got through it okay. <clears throat> oh, it's such a fun run, but because there's not really ever a break in the action, it's always stressful, especially on this in this category. How the game goes. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> what was my time on that? It looks like a 24. That's that's okay. That's pretty yeah. okay. Yeah, for any, anything under 25 for a marathon, I was happy with. Um, I did get a 2039 while practicing for this, and the record right now is like a ridiculous 1940 by Zero Master, who has pushed Doom speed running in general ridiculous amounts in the last like eight or so years he's been active. So big shout outs to Zero Master. Big shout outs to the Doom World community for hosting speedruns, always providing insight, dissecting this game. Like this thing is almost 30 years old and it is still extremely active as a speed game, both in terms of the base games, the base wads, as well as custom content. So if you love FPS action, this is like the game to really get started. Absolutely. Uh, anything else you have, Ali? Oh, uh, not too much, except I'm, I'm excited as well for your run tomorrow, uh, around the same time, I think, for Doom 64. Yes, thank you. Yeah, if you if you were up for more uh, Demon Kill in action, uh, Doom 64 on Watch Me Die will be tomorrow, but I need to rest until then, so I will pass it back to Mug, and we will continue this great marathon, so thank you all for, for watching this. For sure. Thanks so much for that showing off that great run. We'll look forward to your next the Doom 64. Ellie, I'm so glad you were here because I would have been useless. So a real <laughs> treat to have both of you um, to clearly know what you're talking about. Um, Y'all, back for one more game. It's as I've been hyping up, it's Quest for Glory 1 is coming up next. So let's send off these two. We'll take a quick break and I'll be right back with you in just a minute.